Hello and welcome to the Talking Wednesday podcast. It is a Jake and Jack episode this week. Uh, James is away, um, so we are taking the mantle. And we apologize that this podcast is late this week. Uh, it was meant to be done on Monday. I had a family emergency I had to go deal with. Uh, everything's okay. Everything's fine. But as we always do on this show, we go into how you eat. But before that, follow us on all our socials. If you want to be part of the Discord, become a member of the channel. Uh, there's different membership options. And if you want to leave a review, please do so. Give it five stars and it'll probably get read out on the show. Uh, I don't think we'd have one for a while. I haven't checked in a while either. I, I actually checked the other day. Uh, the last one we had was in 2022. So... No, nah, that's not right. Yeah. I'm sure we had them in the That Discord. was on Podchaser. That was 2022 was the last time we had a review on there. I think, I think on <laughs> Apple it might have gone up. Ah, um anyway how's your week been jack uh it's been it's been stressful with money things and all sorts of other things i'm just trying to sort my life out really uh so it's it's been a it's been a it, it's really uh i'm i'm white knuckling life at the moment let's say let's put it that way but it was really nice to see you guys uh at, for the live episode and stuff even though i wasn't on camera i promise i was there he was there, like, was throwing you know. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it was. It was quite funny, actually. Um, but it's it's been okay. Just, just, I don't know what to say about that. Really, just kind of getting into the routine of everything and trying to get out of the habit of being too hard on myself about other things. And I, I, I will, I, I would go into it, but I don't want it to become a therapy session, really. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've also been told that I need to put my microphone in front of my mouth. Uh, so it doesn't pick up the, my PC fans. Uh, so this is why the video watchers won't be able to see me talking. And of course, if this was a, some sort of animator, they would love me right now because half their workload would be gone and done. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, how's your week been, Jake? Um, not too bad, to be fair. Uh, it's Easter half term now. So we got all that loveliness. As you can tell by my voice, I picked up something from one of my kids. Again, uh, water which, is wet. Yeah, which isn't <laughs> great. So I'm not feeling 100%. Uh, I could have done with ideally getting this out on the Monday when we said we were going to do it. But things happen, things change, all that kind of yes. stuff. I'm, you know what? I've been doing my own little therapy session. I have been playing the absolutely living hell out of American Truck Simulator because I've just needed to take my brain away from everything that's been going on. Uh, yeah. Wednesday-related, life-related, and just... You know when you've got that one game that really you go back to, or you know it's just a game that you can go and play, and it'll, you'll chill out immediately? For me, yep. it's driving a big, fake 18-wheeler truck. And yeah. As you know, I'm looking at... You've even got the steering wheel and everything, which is amazing. As, as you amazing. know, <laughs> I am investing some more money yes. into that at some point, uh, twofold, because uh, I'm looking at replacing the wheel I've got and also other things as well. Mm. Um, but, but for me, because I don't drive, it's oh, a yeah. way of doing yeah. it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't get the opportunity. But it's been good. Um, just been... Slowly but surely, working on video ideas, working on things for next season, depending on what division we're in. We'll get into that later. Mm. Um, because I'm not going to lie in a selfish point of me. I need the international break. It's good for my uh, yeah. like recharge <laughs> kind of thing. I'm not going to get that in League One if we go back down. But no. apart from that, everything's been good. But uh, I hope you all had good Easter's as well, because it was Easter Sunday. Um, it felt weird, actually, having a game on Friday. Because it threw my weekend off. And then Monday as well. Yeah. It, it was it, weird. The whole it, schedule was so weird around the, the Easter period. and Because the Prem the prem teams didn't have the change of schedule. I've just said it both ways, haven't I? Yep. Schedule and schedule. Anyway, either or, whatever, potato, <laughs> potato. But it was, yeah, we, so weird that, like, the Prem teams weren't affected. And, yeah, everybody else was like... yeah shuffled around so much well, it, and i don't know felt weird for me for me i always find the easter one always interesting because that friday monday game is always a good indication of how your season's gonna be and kind of thing yeah. and we'll talk about our games in a minute but the thing is i think with me i watched a lot of football as well over the weekend and mm. it 
And you know what? I am starting to get a little bit tired of watching the Prem. It's starting, oh, it's so to, boring, it's starting it? to do me do you not think? a little bit. It's, starting it's to do just my head so a flat bit. and yeah. soulless and corporate and boring. It's so boring to watch. Like and I know a couple of people who got mm. a comp ticket for Man City. And oh, they really? Said they hated it. They absolutely yeah. hated it. There's no atmosphere. There's nothing. It, it was like it's soulless. Yeah. And I think... It just... Ugh, yeah. I think that's why you see some of the teams who sometimes go up and then come back down, they actually then enjoy being back down as fans. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because yeah, I mean, the atmospheres are so much better. I mean, mm. it's it's been... A, loads of people have been bigging up, uh, like, fan atmosphere. From Prem, you know, relegated Prem teams or whatever, they've been bigging up, like, fan atmospheres at the championship club so much more, saying that there's actually... It, it exists. Like, a fan atmosphere actually exists at these places. Yeah. But up in the Prem, there's so few clubs now that... It's all like, you know how they used to say that about England, that it's all like the prawn sandwich eater brigade. That's It's basically that, but at so many other clubs now in the Premier League. And it just, yeah. there's no, like, I mean, we'll say it about us because it's happened to our club as well. But like fans in the Premier League are just getting priced out. Like they, yeah. the, the, the typical fan can't afford to buy a season ticket or a normal ticket, etc. anymore. And it's only the people that are very well off with money that possibly don't even care that much about the team that just go because they can you know and it's i think for me it gets to a point where the price of football itself is getting to a point where the average person isn't able to like take a family to it without it costing them a fortune or that is their one treat for the entire year yeah going to football and for me that's something you know what? That's something that needs to be looked at. And I think the football regulations that might come into play will help that. Yeah. And they'll make owners accountable. But again, who's going to regulate it? The problem is if it's the, if it's an independent body, great. If it's the government, I kind of question it. Mm. I'm not going to go into politics there. We don't. But it's that yeah. whole thing of everything with it. It's like independent. Having a regulator is needed in football. Yes. It's been needed for some time. Yeah. But the problem is they're only doing it now because they're having to. It's not because yeah. they want it. They have to. I would rather it had been they want to bring it in than have to. It's, exactly. It's, it it sounds better, you know what I mean? It looks better as well. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But shall we talk about <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday? <laughs> oh, do we have to? Yes, For I'm God's afraid. sake. Um, oh. So, Sheffield yeah. Wednesday played Swansea City on Friday. Talk me through it, Jack. It was it was such a frustrating game because it was one of those where we were we were properly like throwing the kitchen sink at it, and it just wouldn't it wouldn't come off for us. And then, in typical Wednesday fashion, like really far towards the end of the game, we have a great chance from mm. you know we have a lot of great play in their half and suddenly they go up the other end and end up scoring because the defense has yet again had a lapse in concentration or whatever the hell keeps happening and we've drawn with swansea went really we needed to win that and yes we need to win all the rest of the remaining games all that jazz but with a game like that against a team in the position that they're in we should have won that game mm. and we didn't because quality or a lack thereof let us down again and i think it's... i think for me there was a lot of people who were talking about how little possession we have but we did that on yeah. purpose that was a perfect exactly. thing to try and get them on the break because that's how we play it's and that's we swansea's let weakness as well yeah. a lot of teams have beaten swansea by getting them on the break and that's exactly what we tried to do exactly and and we tried to do it and it just it didn't really work and don't get me wrong we played some good stuff, but at the same yeah. time, you look at the goal Kadam Archie actually scored, it's grappy. It's very, oh, yeah. very grappy. And he kind of scuffs his shot when he gets the goal. Yeah. The cracking ball in, and we fun can finally say, we got another goal from a set piece at last. Yeah, but at why, last, why, finally. Why have, why have we not been able to do that all season? Because I think that that's our sixth goal from a set piece. When you think mm. of how big our bat line is, of well. Oh, God, yeah, exactly. And like... Um, there's that. There's the argument you were saying that loads of people have said like, "Oh, we didn't have much possession, yada yada." Yeah, but they had eight. Swansea had eight shots. We had fourteen. Yeah, and then e an equal amount on target, obviously. But, but the, that's the issue. That if you have yeah. four shots on target, fourteen, 14 shots, and it, only four of them were on target. Like this is it. This is the problem. But we it, don't have a clinical it's finisher. An, it's been an issue for a while. It's like yeah, like it, before this game, we didn't have uh, Deshaun. 
Bernard. He pulled yeah. up with a muscle injury, which was a blow. I, we thought it might be a bit of a case of let's see what happens there because he'd been on international duty, they had to travel, he'd come back, all that kind of stuff. Pulls up in the warm up, not we want. I actually thought Bambo wasn't that bad. I actually think Bambo did okay. And I've seen a lot of people slate him, but I think he looked okay. And I think that he got an okay performance in him. The mm. problem we've got with this team is it's the lack of consistency. Yeah. It's the lack of consistency. It's the lack of being able to finish a game. And the thing is, if we had, I spoke to a Swansea fan who said to me, if you had a clinical striker, we would have been at, done. It'd be gone. Yeah. We wouldn't be in this position. It'd be completely done. Game over. Yep. And we don't have that. We just don't have that. And it's been something we've lacked. I would say for a while, because you can say we had it in Michael Smith, but he had a lot of penalties last year. And to make oh, yeah. matter work, we haven't had a single penalty this year. Mm. And we're coming close to the tail end of the season. And yeah. Swansea goal, had a bit of luck to it because I, I saw a lot of people like, is that handball? Is it not? I can mm. see why it didn't get given. I can see why some people thought it was. Yeah. But they, again, you look at that corner, it's straight, but it, no one's marking them. And the thing is, Barry Bannon came on, he did make a big difference. But the problem is, he just, he, I've, I'm going to say it, he was at fault for the corner. He wasn't watching his man. Mm. Yeah. And the problem is, it's more and more these laps of concentration, which we don't need, which we could do without. We needed to be on the ball on this one, and we weren't. And when you look at the games that happened that day, it doesn't help us. When you no, look not at, at all. Uh, so Bristol City beat Leicester 1 0, which was a shock. West Brom, Millwall got a draw. We yeah. got a draw. Huddersfield got beat by Coventry 3 1. Plymouth got beat. 2-1 by Plymouth, uh, by Norwich City, Norwich. sorry. Uh, yeah. They can't beat themselves. Well, they can. Sunderland, <laughs> they can. Sunder Sunderland uh, lost 2-0 to Cardiff. Stoke got a win versus Hull. Oof. Where where did that, that come from? Yeah, where the heck did that come from? Like? And then you've got, Hull, uh, then you've got Southampton versus Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough get a 94-minute winner. Uh, <laughs> equaliser. Equaliser, yeah. Oh. QPR got a win versus Birmingham, and they're on the up now. Preston beat Rotherham, Ipswich beat Blackburn, and Leeds and Watford got a 2-2. Two -two. And mm. in those games, for all of 35 minutes, we were, we were out, the relegation we were out of the relegation zone for the, for first, the first time, time this all season. season. <laughs> and it was one point in it. It was one point in yeah. it. You're like, that point dropped. We have to go and do better versus middle. Yeah. We got to. And you, you have a little bit of... And did we? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you have a little bit of uh, get to do them with it and you look at it and mm. you're trying to figure it out. But it's again, let's go to the middle of the game. Let's just talk about oh, it. That, it was just horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. And this is the thing I've seen for this particular game. We'll, we'll talk about what actually happened, etc. But there's the real pressing thing that i wanted to raise is that loads of fans after the fact have been coming out saying that paul and bambo were you know what the hell were they doing they weren't sticking with what the rest of the team were doing no they were doing what danny instructed the whole team to do it was the rest of them that weren't mm. the I whole think... system that danny is trying to implement doesn't work when only cer only certain cogs are actually fulfilling their roles and doing their jobs. The only real ones doing their jobs against Middlesbrough were Ugbo, Bambo, and Paul. All the rest of them, what the hell were they? They were reverting back to Darren Moore football, even. And mm. Danny was on the sideline screaming oh, at he, them. Oh, he was going apoplectic. To, he, was he was just absolutely He was mental. losing his head. And, and the thing is, with this one, for me, Marvin Johnson buried that chance. You're thinking, okay, we've got a chance in there. Yeah. It just goes into the path of the post. From that, we didn't have a cat and hell chance. It, we went no. to pieces. We couldn't keep the ball. We kept on playing it out from the back. Uh, Beadle kept on playing it to Akin, who just kept on losing it. We showed, yeah. We've seen that Akin can't do this at all. And they really, really turned to screw on us. And they didn't have to do much to get a win. They really no. didn't. Um, the goal and what got the hell wasn't... was all that long ball stuff? Why yeah. were they reverting to that when Danny was screaming, stop it? Mm. That, you know, play it, in, play it around the back and then who fits Wugbo, who wasn't even there because he was playing Danny's system of 
collect it at the at the back and move up the pitch together as a unit. That was what they what Danny was wanting them to do, but and play it short to feet. But no, let's just give it to Barry, who hoops, hoofs it up the pitch in an attempt to do some worldy of an assist, but nobody's there. I think it worked and that was just once. happening all... Oh, it was And I think so... it when Cads got on the end of it. Yeah. And that was it. And I felt and sorry for Cads. he was there isolated Marchery. on his own and he yeah. lost the ball because it was on his own. I felt sorry for because Cads yeah. were trying to put a shift in. And the thing is, you look at that first half, no one had a really good game. Masaba no. went missing again. Yeah. Um, And then second half, just all over the place. They they mm. they actually had a stonewall penalty they should have had, and then they got a penalty and missed that. Yeah. The goal they got was classic then, really. Yeah. We had a we had a little bit of chance, but nothing clear cut. Everyone was no. just walking back. Everyone yeah. was just head down. Everyone had, were deflated. They were absolutely deflated. Yet, how do you pick that up? And I, <laughs> I've seen so many people online go, "This is Danny's fault. This is Danny's fault." <laughs> This is the players. This is the same this bunch is all of players. The players. This is the yep. same bunch of players that nearly blew promotion. Nearly. Exactly. Yeah. There's only a couple bit. And a lot of them are not Danny players. No. There's about a couple that have come in that are Danny players. The the most stupid argument I've seen online about this whole like this is Danny's team, this is all Danny's fault, yada yada yada. No. All of this squad are either Cisco's players or Darren Moore's players. The only players that Danny has brought in. All of these people complaining online have fallen in love with. The players that Danny has brought in into the system that Danny wants to play are Ugbo, Beadle, um, Pervader. and Paveda. And Paveda. And all of those three, the fans have fallen in love with and are not saying are at fault for any of this at all. They are Danny's players. All the rest of them are the previous two managers' players. My my thing, Gasama came on and he didn't. He tried bits and pieces, but is he he's getting not, back? I don't is think he's back? ready for the championship yet. In it, le- if we're in League One, that's he, he's. He, mm. You look at the stats; it was sixty-five percent possession to them, thirty-five yeah. to us. They had twenty-three <laughs> shots, three shots, to and our only five, five. and oh five on God. target. We had five shots and one on target. They had eleven corners and five, uh, and we had five. And we had eleven fouls. Oh and again. A goal again from a corner, a set piece that we yeah. cannot defend. How are we not able to defend a set piece? I don't know. Because it's we can't defend them. We can't bloody go. No. This is why Danny wanted a set piece coaching. Yeah. And I saw people when Danny said he wanted a set piece coaching, we didn't go, well, the coaches should be doing this. The coaches should be doing we got Yeah, you can. Uh, the whole idea of having lots of different coaches for different things is the whole point is that they just work on that setup and that setup only. And I think that's something interesting in the terms of what's going on in with that style of football now. Because you do yeah. get a lot of coaches now and managers who want a different person per situation, if that makes sense. Who specialize in each field sort of thing. It's, and I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen a couple of people go with like the situation football kind of thing and say all that kind of stuff. But I got this, my thing with that is that it is how he wants to play and you've got to utilize that. Yeah. And Danny's comments at the end were so gaming. I, I loved him for that. I, I absolutely, never, totally I seen, back him. Yeah. I haven't seen a manager do that with Wednesday in a very long time. Darren, I think, I think Darren last... did it once, and I think da- it was it was, it was actually Dave Jones back in the day that was the last one from my memory that did it. No, I have to say, Dar- Darren or... did it uh, versus Burton. Oh right, okay, remember, yeah. Um, but that that's the thing; it shouldn't be from that kind of situation. But what he said was interesting. He was saying some players come say, I want to play. They need to be quiet. And now. demand to play and all that sort of thing. They yeah. need to be quiet now. Some And he said, that's not a Danny Rule way of playing football. That's not how mm. I set them up. And yeah. we went back. I showed them clips of what happened. There were people walking. I would have hated to have been on that bus home and then <laughs> going into training the next day because yep. Danny was fuming. Mm. And with good reason oh let's, yeah let's just call it what it i'm is. i'm fully behind danny coming out and saying the things that he said because it just shows 
it shows both his passion and it shows that he does indeed know what he's talking about i think yeah. like and as well the, the, like we're, again we'll be talking about this later on in the article because there is there's a whole thing on it but um all of these people online saying that Danny's leaving at the end of the season, etc. Why would a manager be this passionate about this is not a Danny Rill way of playing football and, and whatnot and coming out and saying these things if he was leaving? Mm. If he was leaving, he wouldn't care. He'd give the typical just off-the-cuff responses, the, the, the neither here nor there sort of responses that you see from so many managers now that know that they're leaving. Yeah. They, effectively, he would have been giving Gary Monk or Tony Pulis style responses to those questions. Yeah. You know, he wouldn't have gone that passionately into answering the questions like he did if he was if he didn't care if he was off if he was doing this that and the other. I agree. All of these doom and gloom mongers need to stop doing this now. Like, why are you saying these things when the evidence clearly shows that he won't be leaving? And he can't walk anyway because he's tied down on a two-year contract. You know, this season and next season. Mm. He can't walk. He, he, he can't. He, he legally goes, cannot do that. If he goes, he's got to be bought out of his contract. That they exactly. see it happening. Exactly. And or Chance Theory's got to sack him. And see, I see, don't see that happening either because see, it would cost thing. him too much money. That's yeah. the thing. That's the elephant in the room. Yeah. Could happen. Because we know what Chance is like, but I don't think Chance is that stupid. Um, no. to do it after hopefully not I hope not after everything because then it yeah. doesn't look good on him and granted no exactly the thing is and even oh. after all this the one thing that I've got is it's still three points yeah that's it so let's go through what the results were during the uh, Monday game uh, yes. Leicester won 3-1 versus Norwich Plymouth lost 1-0 which it was the sacking of their manager they mm. now got a caretaker until the end of the season uh, it's not worn out like people thought. It's the last caretaker manager. Birmingham beat Preston. Rotherham got a 2-1 win versus That's Millwall. That's mental. They've actually won a game. Oh, my God. Uh, West Brom 2-2 with Watford. Blackburn 5, Sunderland 1. Ugh. Which they That's not good for start, us because they were in going. the... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Middlebrook 2 went the yeah. nil. QPR beat Swansea. Shot Cora, you can beat Swansea. Um, <laughs> Stoke, Huddersfield 1-1. One, one. Cardiff versus Coventry 2-1. 3-2 Ipswich versus 10 men at Southampton and a last minute winner as well. Yeah, it was mental. Um, Did you see, have you seen the... I've seen the, the celebrations. Oh, it's mental. Yeah, the limbs, Absolutely fantastic. The limbs, yeah. yeah. And it was Leeds United 3, Hull City 1. So oh. at the bottom of the table, it looks like this. And this is the mental thing. Oh Robert 23 points. Wendy 39 points. Huddersfield 40. Plymouth 41. Birmingham oh. 42. Millwall oh 44. Stoke 45. Birmingham 45. QPR 46. QPR, in theory, if they win at the weekend versus us, they're safe. Yeah. They in are safe. In theory, yeah. They're mm. safe. I, yeah, think it, I think it's starting to look like Blackburn from 17th down now. Yeah. Mm. Where it could, I would agree. Where it'll I be. would agree. Uh, yeah. If you go the other end, it's with Town atop on 87 points. Mental. Leeds, 86. Leicester, 85, but they do have a game in hand. Mm. Southampton have two games in hand as well on 74. Uh, West Brom, 68. Norwich, 64. And then Coventry, Preston. And Middlesbrough, as as mental of people thought I was when I said Middlesbrough might do a playoff push, they're in the they're in the hat for it as a whole. Yeah. Time to yeah. It just shows you how tight this league is. Kind it's of just meant, if you actually look, though, at that top six, the only one that's not one of the parachute payments brigade in that is Ipswich at the top. And so I think fair play. Hats well, off. Norwich aren't anymore because Norwich has had all oh, those. Oh, th that stopped last year, didn't yeah, it? I it think, did. actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think West Brom stopped this year. Yeah. Southampton left the Leeds, Ipswich. Ipswich mm. are the only one that's not. Uh, yeah. But if Ipswich goes up, McKenna deserves manager of the season. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, have no you seen the talk, it. actually? This is a side note, but have you seen the talk that he's rumoured to be getting eyed up for the Man United manager I job? I have seen that, which... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm somebody... If you're the manager of the Ipswich, would you really want to go touch that job? 
now. I think with their ownership, mm, I think, even, honestly, even with the new ownership model that's yeah. there, would you still want to touch it? Like, yes, it's Man United, but surely if you've got a bit of sense, you'd want to stay at somewhere like Ipswich and get more experience before you go somewhere like that. Because clearly he's destined for, like, real big oh, yeah. things, just like Danny Real is. But surely you'd want a bit... Because, like, before Ipswich, I believe it was only... It was pretty much... Was it an under-21 team that he was the manager of somewhere? Manchester United. It, oh, Manchester United, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. why, that, why, that's why there's the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I I would want a bit more like experience at first team club level somewhere else. You'd probably actually want to see to him see what he does up. in the Prem first as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Give him a chance at the Prem and go there and then yeah. see what happens. Because at the moment, they don't look like they're not going to stop. No, I, they look like I they're actually going to go up. If yeah. they get double back to back promotions, that's really good on their that's board. Mental. That's really good on their uh, picking mechanic. And it shows you if you actually. Stick to your convic convictions and you stick with a manager. You can do something. And oh, look, but if you actually have a long-term plan and build something over a long-term period, you actually can have success. Yeah. It doesn't all have to get affected by short-term goings-on because this is football. This is what happens in football. You can actually have a long-term plan. Hit, hit, hit the oh, thing. my God. And even after our game against them, Danny Rill came out in the press and yeah. was saying that Ipswich and their ownership model and everything are all doing it right, and we need to learn from yep. them. Here's the thing I got. From Bristol City down, everybody <laughs> has either changed their manager once or twice. And that says yes, it all. Yes, they have, me. actually. They have, yeah. That says it all. Plymouth yeah, are now chaos. their third manager. Birmingham are on their six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the stupid thing is Birmingham... Are, six? Really? Six? Is yeah, that... it's technically six because of the caretaker roles. Oh, my roles God. And stuff. Could Gary Rowett, Rowett technically like the sixth manager? Oh, he's, yeah, yeah. He's the... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, Plymouth <laughs> twice. Us once. Rotherham mm. once. Uh, Millwall twice. Yeah. Stoke once, Blackburn twice. No, but, once, or, once, once, yeah, once. Yeah. Um, well, chaos off the field leads to chaos on the field, as we're seeing. Well, here's the thing. I Thank you for that little I, tidbit, Benjamin Bloom. I completely uh, forgot yes. that Watford have got Tom Cleverley in charge. Oh, my God, they have. Oh, that makes me feel old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I remember, oh, I remember him being a regular in Roy Hodgson's England squad, and that makes me feel really old now. Oh, God. Oh, oh, well, oh, well, oh welcome to oh, the world oh, of me and Dex, where oh, players you used to watch are now managers. Yeah. Oh, it's not a nice oh, feeling, mate. No. <laughs> it's not nice at all. Um, shall we get into the news? Of course. So, Will Volks have been named Championship Community Champion. Our midfielder Will Vokes has scooped an unprecedented treble after being named the EFL Championship player in the community for the 2023-2024 season. This is from the Sheffield Wednesday website. Volk wins the award for the first time as he continues his outstanding commitment to the community project. The EFL has announced the division winner for the EFL Community Award 2024, celebrating the very best of clubs in the community work and recognizing committed in innovation and impact during the 2023-2024 season. Winners will be presented with their awards at the House of Common. Um, so, as role med models across the EFL, the winners are as follows. Uh, for the championship, sponsored by the PFA, it's Will Vokes. Uh, Portsmouth, it's Marlon Pack. I forgot Marlon Pack was still going. He, we were linked with mm. him years ago. And Morgan, it, for, can you read that name for me? I'm going to mess that up. Uh, Farrand Rawson. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, You're very welcome. <laughs> Will Vokes have won the award for strong support connection to the club community program work and his wider charitable commitment to closing Blue, well, Blue, yeah, Blue Bell Wood Ch Children's Hospice and the role he plays in exercise in the Batman's hope to rely on mental health awareness. Marlon Pock for Portsmouth in League One has been recognised for his keenness to support the wider community of his boyhood club, his commitment to fan engagement and coaching in the community, including supporting the academy teams in his spare time, and his dedication to one-on-one -on -one time with several fans in need of support and special treatment. For that, say it again, because I'm going to mess it up. F Farrand Rawson. Baron Wilson is acknowledged for his ability to carry his influence on the pitch into the community work and fair, bred his enthusiasm for the importance of player support into the 13 dressing room. 
Barrows has supported Goal Project the Extra Time program for over six for sixty and Christmas organisation players and staff donations to buy presents for children in local hospitals. Uh, Trevor Birch, the CEO, has said, I am honoured to be here at the House of Parliament today to celebrate the winners from this year, the EFL Community Award. The real-life stories shared by participants from the community programmes across the league is humbling. Showed the breadth and depth of the work delivered. Uh, this annual event presents a powerful reminder of the girl and reach and impact club community works and its significant to the 72 towns and cities of the EFL clubs served all year round. And you know what? That's Will Vogt to a T. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's been a patron for the Bluebell Wood uh, Hospice for years since he was at Rotherham, I think, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So I just think hats off. Like, more players should get this much, like, into the uh, community stuff. And time and time again, we've seen when they do that, they're actually loved a lot more by the fans of their club. And frankly, mm. I, I, I don't understand when, like, players just don't get themselves really heavily involved in it. Like, it's all very well and good when players go around with their little Christmas trips to the hospitals for the PR stunts or whatever else, but, like, Will Volks does this off his own back as well. Yeah. And he, and he makes a, makes it a point to go and do things because he understands that these players are actually role models to a lot of people and seeing them then engage in the community projects and, and helping people and all that sort of thing... You almost sort of think with the amount as well that football players are paid nowadays, they should really be doing things like this. They mm. should be acting as the role models that they are seen to be uh, as by, by like, you know, children and everything. Yeah. Because they will grow up one day and they might even have these football players doing these wonderful things as their role models and inspirations for them themselves exactly. going out and doing things. So it's so important that players get involved in these community projects. And I just think... It's fantastic that Will Volks has got recognised for this because he does a lot. Yeah. And, for and Marlon Pack the community. and, and yeah. uh, Wilson because it just it shows yeah. what they need to do. But exactly. Well done for like the, the, the what true you're role doing models and, and role yeah. models and just helping your community out. And for someone like Will Volks, he's not even from Sheffield and he's still supporting like yeah, exactly. Marlon Pack. It's his boyhood club. Yeah. Wilson. So it just shows you that there are good eggs in football. Don't believe anything yeah. you read online. About no, exactly. So the next couple of stories are future-based stuff, really, in terms mm. of what it is. But Sheffield Wednesday duo, <coughs> duo looking likely to leave in the summer of change. This is from the start. Mm. Uh, I think all the articles... Are You're gutted start. about one of these. I know I that, am, because I'm you were saying before gutted. it. Yeah. Uh, both Luke Cook and Adrian Adatoro joined the Owls as a start of the 2022-2023 season, coming on board to bolster the youth ranks, having impressed on trial at Middlewood Road in week before. Now Cook 21 and Adatoro 22 among the older players in the Croppers under 21. The style led to believe both are looking to move on in search for new challenges elsewhere once their current deals end come to an end. Um, Cook and Abba made one appearance each at senior level for the Al, both coming under Darren Moore in Cup games last season, and they've been regular for the under 21s in 2023 2024 season. However, there's also another teammate, Jay Glover, who's also looking like he's going to be gone as well, mm. which is another one I think some people were asking about. Um, it's always bad and a hard time for when under 21s have to leave because they've got to then go out and find their own way in the world of football, and it's yeah. difficult. The one I'm gutted about is Adatoro. I've seen yeah. lots of him, and he looked like an absolute unit, and I don't understand to a point why this one's been done. I think this one could bite us in the backside a little bit, personally, because mm. I was thinking he was the one that could go out out of the, that current crop of players and be in there as our defensive player. Um, and it's, it's gutting, really, when you think of it like that, because... You really want to see them come on and really come into the way of uh, when they team. You want to see yeah. them come into the way we play. Yeah. And you, if you don't get that, you're going to have that issue where you're going to really struggle to get other players in. And we've yeah. got, we got to start being better at this. We've got yeah. to start being better at using our, our um, academy. Because if people think there isn't much money in, this is where you get a lot of your money from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what yeah. We're... I mean, you've got to think that maybe, just to sort of give the other side of the potential equation here as well, um, 
uh, perhaps well danny Rule wants there to be a clear like f uh pathway through from the under eight teams right and up we'll to the first later. team and stuff and we will be talking about this in a second but effectively what you might then think is maybe danny rule doesn't actually see him as a player that fits his system in in terms of like in i don't know one well with his age it would be next year wouldn't it really yeah. because he's too old for the under 21s yeah um and it would take too long for him to adjust into the sort of system that Danny Rule wants to play. So maybe it was the best thing for him to go and go to another club where... We'll see what happens. To happened, be honest, but... I would probably see him actually fitting more of a Darren Moore system mm, rather than what yeah. we're trying to play. So and Port I Vale it possibly, is then, Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> we'll, be seeing him, we'll be seeing him in the summer signing for Port Vale, I reckon. Yeah. But, um, uh, but good luck to yeah. your future lads. It's very difficult yeah. in this game to get into mm. football and... We've done well with some of the youngsters who are coming and done well. You look at Cad, you look at um, Grillia, you look at Sam Reed, another one who will may look at extending his deal very shortly too, which goes on to another one. Trevor went there, mm. keen to extend, stay, extend the state of exciting attack and duo at Hilfer. The pair have seen two very exciting players in the Owls Academy in present and have contributed heavily in the under-21 season. They're puffed for top two finish. Poofy, who recently turned 19, has an eventful season so far, made his debut for Wednesday in the FA Cup and also in the international battle for Zimbabwe. While 18-year-old Ono Wunwe uh, has made a good progress at Middle Road since coming on board from the Volton Academy in London oh, just over a year ago. Uh, both cup problems in the Wigan for Wigan on Tuesday night. Um, Andy Holt side, 2 0 winner, top of the uh, PDL table, temporary before Birmingham City won the get their game last night. And so these are people we are looking like we could mm. redo. And it's like, like I said, it's like Jay Glover, Adator, and Luke Cook are set to be making their way out. And Cook, Striker came in, didn't really set the world on fire to mm. not see more. But then you've got the likes of Sam Reed, Poofy, and all the who looks like they're going to be extended. And if you remember, Poofy was very, very good in our. Uh, pre-season that we yeah. had everyone was like saying he's really good and if you remember he's the one who was all over the place because people like either brentford having a trial oh he's leaving oh he's yeah. Leaving. yeah and then we managed to sort out a deal for him and yeah. i think we need to start using the under 21s a lot more and i think yeah it needs to happen soon because there's, we... there's been so many managers that have said, oh, yeah, I want to create a clear path from, you know, the academy to the first team and then just haven't done it. They haven't utilized any of the players that have actually come through the under 21s. Yeah. And yet. And, and I think finally we've got a manager in Danny who actually does want to do that. And I yeah. think he's possibly well, the reason probably why he's released the players that he has or is set to release them is I think he's probably taking the approach. And as we're going to talk about in a bit, it he's actually inviting the under 18s and under 21s coaches to watch the first team train and how they, how he wants to kind of implement that all the way through the club. And I think he's probably taking the stance of, are they going to potentially be first team one day? No. Why are we bothered with having them here then? Why are we developing them? Mm -hmm. And I think he's, it's all that high idea of these are meant to be stepping up to the first team one day and actually following through on that rather than just having it's what they do in germany like yep. s they, there's not a lot of transfers from outside of germany and there's not really a lot that happens in terms of that sort of thing over there it's all just Their players actually being good enough yeah. to step up to the first team like that's just what happens over there. And I think he's, and I like that. I like that oh, okay. a lot because it means that we won't be spending much on getting players in. But because if they're good enough from the academy, fantastic. Like exactly. Reading had that for a few years. Like I know it was 10, 10 or so years ago. They all, but then again, Reading that's also what were with them. very, very, very good at Gouting Island. Oh, they God, got yeah. some yeah, damn yeah. good players out of Ireland. Yes. Um, but it, it what needs to happen and brings mm. on to a good set of light. Why unfamiliar faces have been spotted at Sheffield Wednesday training ground again from the start? Some of mm. the Owls youth coach staff, even some who coach players of a young age, have been invited to senior training at Middlewood Road on watching brief gathering information on Danny Rules and his staff go about things and the view of developing a future player's felt philosophy. Yeah. That runs Developing up. a future playing philosophy. Thank you. That's, that's, yes. That runs from the club's <laughs> youngster side right up to the first team. 
Cubs under 21 boss Andy Holdsworth has recently spoke about the German coach impacts on the playing style of the squad with a clear focus on developing players toward the intensive front foot playing style that continues to be implemented at senior level. Before people in the comments go or say stuff, I know we didn't see it versus um, Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, but that's what we're trying to do. Um, the benefits of strength of relationship with the Alder Academy, we all have said, will be seen in years to come. The, th the star goes on to say from Royal, this is for the future. I want to have a link with the academy to invite coaches to some training session to speak to about the philosophy. Philosophy. Thank you. Uh, it can be very helpful that we have the academy at first steps at the same direction. This season is is what not always possible to do, but it, for me, it's a big, big topic for the future. Maybe every month or two months, we'll have a big meeting with them. We'll train together. We'll have a conversation. Everybody understands a bit more what I want for the first team. It means we have a better transfer from academy to first team. This is something that I've been needing to done for so long. It's exactly what we were talking about earlier, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like when he when he was saying it's not always been possible this season because we don't have the players to do it. No. We don't have that like the back line that can actually play it out from the back properly. We've never, I, even though Darren Moore wanted us to play that, he didn't then sign the players who could do it. And it's the same with uh, with Danny. Is his way of playing has sometimes gone to the wayside because the players on the pitch have just decided to go rogue and not do it. And that's mm. exactly what happened with Middlesbrough. It's what happened at Coventry. All of these big defeats that people are getting negative about Danny for are when the players didn't follow his plan, when they didn't do what Danny told them to do. Yeah. And this is exactly what he's highlighting a little bit here and a bit of a bit of a sly dig, maybe. But he doesn't have the players of the quality that need that he needs to play this system. And to say, to now be wanting to set that kind of training regime up and the tactics and all that all the way down through the academy sides, it, it why has this not been done before? I think it's not been done before why? because I think a lot of the time the academy has been looked over. It's not been looked at properly. Like this, um, it, it affect because several managers have said it though in the past yeah. that, that this is what needs to happen and they've never done anything about it. They've never actually done it and followed up with what they've said. They've just uh, and I've never understood why. Darren was the and one. It's, it's, the, Darren was the one that came close to it. Got yeah. close to getting it like feeling right and getting it. Right. Yeah, we've not really had a proper link up from the academy since. <laughs> Brian Lord day when he brought in yeah, the likes of literally. Palmer, he brought in the likes of uh, Mark Beavers, Tommy Fur, all yeah. that lot came from the academy. And you can say yes, uh, Dawson come from the academy, but he's not really gone on to continue, really. Uh, I guess a, a, a success story that we were actually seeing unveil in front of us is Joe Wildsmith. Like, good on him. Yeah, they love him at Derby. And he's going to be great for him. And that is a so-called academy success story, I guess. Um, Bailey. I mean, you, you ba could argue. You can well, say Bailey to a point. And Bailey a player that everyone forgets about, Ben Godfrey, who's at Everton. Oh, yeah, everyone was, always yeah. forgets. He was in, he our, was in our under-18s and yeah. our academy. And then they got him from us. Um, I think this also put to light the whole situation with the whole Danny Gowen situation as well. Yeah. Why would you do this? You wouldn't be bothered. Exactly. You wouldn't be bothered. You wouldn't be wanting to. You wouldn't try it. and do all of this if you were leaving in the summer. Like, mm. it just it frustrates me that all of these people are constantly like churning out this argument. Where, what are you basing this on? What is the basis for this entire thing that you're trying to say when all of the evidence like this points in the opposite <coughs> direction? I think he wanted it's... to build something. He wanted to build something. Exactly. He wanted to get everything in place. And I think he's smart enough. And the thing is, a lot of people forget this as well. Danny was a youth team coach. Yeah. At Lysic. At RB Lysic, he was a youth team coach. So he knows what he's on about, about getting that from there to there. He yeah. worked with Ralph Ranyak at RB Lysic, where it was, mm. this is how we play. This is how yeah. we're going to do it. And if you've got a common way of playing, that step up from from academy to first team is so much easier exactly you can then go into a first game not looking like a fish out of water you can be yeah. like oh no i've got to have the ball here and when that player runs there i pass it there 
Yeah. Oh, that and he did it with the German national team too. He was he was working with both the first mm. team and the under twenty ones. And so it's not a, an unfamiliar thing to him. He's it's it I ideally this sort of thing should have been implemented years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And we've finally it's just it's so nice to finally have a manager that's backing up what he said and it wasn't just for like PR credits or whatever it wasn't for just good press when he was given an interview when he first me, was appointed i think he like, understands what needs to happen here mm. i think he's also seen the level of support that he got from the fans yeah because uh, one of the un interesting things he said at the end of the game these fans are premier league level supporters and we didn't give them that yeah and that i think uh, if he hadn't have been welcomed as well as he did to the fan base. Yeah. I don't think you would see all these things being put in place. Sidgo no. wasn't welcomed like this. No. At all. And granted, I've seen people make this connection saying, well, Danny's only doing this because he, it's, it's easy to be better than Sidgo. And I understand that. Well, I do understand that to a point because 13 mm. games know when you can be better than things. Yeah, exactly. You've got to remember, but by time Danny came in, everyone had us relegated. Yeah, we were but, we were thirteen points adrift, and now it's literally one point in it. Yeah, I think for me, like the thing with this is it just shows that there's talk being done behind the scenes now. Yeah, and it sounds like this is the kind of thing where somebody higher up, Chancery maybe, is actually listening to somebody now. Bloody and finally! And I mean, Christ, going, how long has it taken him? Ten years? <laughs> yeah, it might, it might, it might be the case, but it does sound, it does yeah. look like he's listening. Yeah. While doing stuff. Our biggest stopping point now, and I'm not going to make a big thing about it because we talked about it to death. Is the training ground? The training ground is just yeah. It is what it is. Something needs to be done with that in the summer, one way or another, to make it so it's at least adequate for what Danny's trying to do. Yeah. At least put the dome back up so we've got an indoor pitch, minimum. Yeah. That's the minimum I would say to do for it. Or have something in place where we can go to an indoor pitch and train. So we're yeah. not on the bloody actual pitch at Hilper. Because that has knackered us this season. Mm -hmm. Until we start seeing those kind of little developments, it's fine. And the other thing is, I don't understand the training pitch a lot. FFP doesn't get tucked by it. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it doesn't it go, fall under it whatsoever. But it go back to what people have said. Does he have the money to do this kind of stuff? Mm. And I'm, again, well, we're not going to talk about it. The books suggest the books. The books suggest that he will do with how much has been Saved. recorded as being taken out with like borrowings and whatnot. Yeah. So if you're taking out that much in borrowings, where is that money going other than to pay off? previous debt yeah. from those same borrowings no, it makes sense. like i mean and also the other lot sheffield united with their little project of uh buying the door complex that already had two local teams on it that they've not really treated very well um it that proves that it can be done there is land available there's plenty of it available even if it's farmers fields in the in the middle of the like, I, think the, I think the problem is bloody grenoside fields, or so, blooming bradfield or something yeah, and you'll be able like, to, you'll be able to answer this one yeah mr geography, <laughs> geography student. Student. Uh, <laughs> but with farmer fields you've got the issue with drainage and seeing what's actually yes. worth building on can you build on it is it agricultural land only are you allowed to build on it and that stuff goes Take time to get full yeah. bloody planning permission, Sheffield City Council. Especially and, yeah. if it, it's in a green belt, you then got people going, Well, I don't want to bunch of football pictures here. That's actually why Lest I know this is like super nerdy and a super offshoot, right? But that's why Leicester's training complex cost as much as it did, because they had to get so many environmental consultants in issue. to make sure it was yeah. all in line with green belt and all like habit uh, hab friendly with habitats and and there was like if because if you look at the structure of it, there's like grass growing up the the, the like the walls of the main yeah. central hub bit and all sorts of stuff. And they had to be like super cautious with all of that and that's why their training complex actually also cost as much and if we build it in a green belt site that's what we'd have to do as well and that's probably a little bit of what's scaring chanceri off mm. from buying certain like farmland or something maybe we but will see what happens in the summer there's a lot of turning cogs that have to go into something at the end like of that day, and it's the train the fact that we're getting academy to first team better is yeah a good for everyone exactly um
I'm getting deja vu on this story that's coming up though, mate. Because I'm pretty sure we spoke about this last season around sure this time. Sure we did. And I'm getting deja vu <laughs> with this. So, summer plan <laughs> being had with two and Sheffield Wednesday quads again. Guess what? Well, There's actually two Talking Wednesday extra videos if you become a join member that you can see Jake yes, and I talk about yes, this exact yes, sort of thing. Exactly. Um, but well, this is also why we're both getting deja vu. Because yeah. I remember sitting there we've with you this. and those handheld microphones saying, oh, if we were in this league, <laughs> we'd talk about this. Yeah, we'd done this we'd already. We'd get these people. <laughs> With contract being but on now hold. we're doing it for free, aren't you all lucky? So, um, our boss Danny Roll <laughs> has originally spoken of February as a month he would talk with un get on the way with some of the senior players coming to the end of their current deals at the end of the cam campaign. Though this has been put on ice and an agreement by all parties to put the club ahead of individual needs after a meeting held in the days after the defeat to Huddersfield Town early last month. I have already seen a lot of people go, they're not getting promised contracts, so that's why they're down in tolls. I don't believe that for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the scene, when they are busy putting plans in place for the summer, <laughs> half the squad they drawn up whether they are Championship or League One heading into the 2024-25 season. The reason I'm laughing is because I remember oh, doing a video so on this. Guys, yes. Darren Moore had got two squads, the League One <laughs> yeah. and Championship squad. Um... Uh, Danny Roll goes on to say that these are two things behind the scenes. We are looking and considering what we can do. The key point at the moment, we are not in a situation where we know exactly where we want to be next season. This makes things difficult. It means we prepare two shadow squads. We have one for this and one for this. And it's our job. We must, this is our job and we must do this. Hopefully we can come over the line as soon as possible and then we can start making contracts and get them done immediately. This is the challenge. We have something in our mind. I always speak with Kevin Beadle, head of recruitment. He's also next door to his office. We will have some big meetings in the following weeks and we will look at what we can do. Including loan players, at least 18 senior players are believed to be coming to the end of their deals at F6 in the coming months. I think I'd let, I think I checked the other day. I think we've got like something stupid, like three or, I think it's like five or six players on the books. What, there's all gone? <laughs> Uh, I can find out now. And uh, look. and well, if the if the things that Danny Rill was saying in the post match interview uh, that actually was a lot longer than what the Sheffield Wednesday official YouTube channel would have you believe, um, <laughs> if <laughs> if believing what he said is true, then they definitely will be coming to an end. That yeah. We won't be seeing pretty much any of those actually get retained. The retained One, list two, is going three, to be four, almost as long, four, if not a little bit longer, than right. it was the last time we went down to... Are you ready for uh, this? Release, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Smith, 2025. Callum Patterson, 2025. Delgado, 2025. Valentin, 2025. Memo 2025, Charles 2025, Masaba 2026, Gasama 2026, Kanamatri 2028. And we don't know the oh, deals. These, are these, oh, that's the only people that will be here next year. And we don't but know the, the, the end of the season, yeah. sorry. And we don't yeah. know the deals of Marvin Johnson, <clears throat> Bambo, Awikway, uh, Reese James, and all that lot. Interesting. <laughs> we kind of know Barry Bannon will be here. That's already been like mm. a given. We all think Palmer will be here. And we think maybe Josh Windass. Yeah. But apart from that, that's our quad for next season. Uh, um, he goes on to say... Um, no, he doesn't. In, yes, he does. In our situation, you have both sides. For the players, maybe they sign a contract and we don't achieve our goal, and then they groans. We have to do both sides. <laughs> it's not important. We have a big meeting after the Huddersfield game. We spoke about this topic. We agreed to make the focus about now and here and achieve our goals. Everyone have we will be in a win-win situation. We'll be, have to achieve a big, big goal. I'm not sure. Maybe never before has a team had so many points behind and stayed in this league. It will be a wonder. I believe in wonders. We will do this. In this situation, it's not about contracts. It's about the club. This is what I demand for my players, myself, everyone. We achieve our goals, and then we speak about the rest. Very, very clear, basically, in it is it's, it's like, do your job and maybe I'll give you a new deal. Yeah. Um, proved well yeah prove to me why you should still be here that's effectively what he's saying and yeah. what he was saying with the middlesbrough defeat is you haven't done that no. goodbye does a, does you're here lot. until the end of the season and then sod off <laughs> and that was uh yeah mm. 
interesting. <laughs> very interesting. And you know what? I actually think that he'd be able to put, like, with, with his um, ethos and everything, I, I do believe that a massive rebuild with him leading the charge in it, I think it would, it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, I think it's what's needed, basically. Yeah. I, I like. I say, let them all go. We need a fresh start. We need to hit the reset button. The even only if it's, issue, even if we don't come out uh, well, there's only there's one issue with that. Yeah, chance we've got to back him and give him the stuff to get players in. And we've seen that with him backing previous managers, it's been a very like one foot in, one foot mm. out approach. It's never been all in. Yeah, it's not actually been all in since Carlos. No, if you think about it. Like he Darren, was the Darren, only one Darren couldn't that he's do it fully first gone behind because we were embargoed. Yeah. Second season, he got a couple of decent things and a couple of threes. And, and then he... Chan Siri screwed him over in January, which yeah. is why we lost out on potentially like the the cutting edge that we needed to get up automatically. Yeah, exactly. And so it's a bit like mm, you you can say that you're going to back every manager, but the proof is in the pudding, and yeah. unfortunately with a lot of the managers he hasn't backed we'll them. probably have it we'll, we'll probably have a video where we're talking about who we think gonna go and stuff like that and reacting yes. to it um i've seen a lot of people oh my god what a clickbait thing the re we're talking wednesday lads react to all these players <laughs> going oh. um but um before we get into summer stuff and stuff like that we've got a game at weekend and i'm not looking forward to it yeah qpr <laughs> who has suddenly found a massive upturn in form. Uh, their record is 12, 10, 18. They're on 46 points. I think if they win this, they could potentially be out of uh, the out of it. Their home mm. record is 5, 6, 9, 21 points. They've got a better away record, though. 7, 4, 9, 25. They've got 39 goals. Goals against 51. Their goal defense is minus 7. And they've got a win at, versus Swansea. Now, in the form table, they are 7th from the last six three wins two draws one loss but look from 16th down where we are look at all the players who are in really bad form Sheffield Wednesday yeah. are two wins three losses one draw but if you look mm. down Blackburn Birmingham Hull Sunderland Rotherham Plymouth Huddersfield yeah. some of them can't even get a win no. And it's the odd win there and there. Like, some are just drawing too much. So, mm. it's going to be an interesting... we got to win. we got to put a, a performance out this weekend. Oh, God, yeah. We can't not. If we don't put a performance out this weekend, we are in big trouble. Yeah. Because We've got six games to go, and I say we need to win at least half of them. We need four wins. Yeah. We need four wins. It's very simple. And the next games after that are Norwich, Stoke... Blackburn, uh, West Brom, Sunderland. There are last load of games. West Brom it, it's, is the uh, half it's one. Be very Norwich tight. is the half one. Stoke mm. and Blackburn the one where you might get something. But with their upturn now, do you see that as an easy game now? I, yeah, I, I, I don't can think see, you do. I can see Stoke as a bit of a banana skin. Mm. Um, mm. It's it's very it oh it getting it's, tight. It's all gonna be very yeah. It getting it's very tight hard to call now. I can understand all, people. All these teams have become a bit too unpredictable. I can understand I people going from this weekend going it's done now, and I get yeah. that. I do get mm. that because I you were saying that to me, weren't you? I do In feel the a little reaction. bit. A little bit. It does feel like we could be done, but again, it's still one point. Yeah. It's still possible. We go on another winning streak like we did before Leeds and Ipswich, and some of these teams who have had upticks think Blackburn is the ones that you've got to look at. Their running is horrible. Hmm. Leeds, Leicester, Ipswich, they could get properly dragged into this. Yes, they got a 5-1 win versus a NAS, a NAF, uh Sunderland team who have gone the last six and lost. Four, one, one, yeah. drawn one. Oof. Plymouth haven't won a game in the last six. Mm. And they just got a caretaker manager. Huddersfield haven't won a game in the last six. They yeah. could get properly dragged into this now. Yeah. That's my only saving grace. That we could potentially rely on other people, but we have to turn up. We can't rely on other people. We've done that oh, yeah, season after season after season. This has got to be on our terms. 
100%. Exactly. We've, we've just, we, mm, it's that old like adage of we just got to focus on ourselves and nothing else. The old cliche, and, isn't it? Yeah, literally. It's the, I think it's the old cliche that bloody Gary Monk was starting a lot. Yeah. And sorry, Andy, we've mentioned his name quite a lot in this episode, haven't we? Um, but. <laughs> yeah, more like normal. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, uh, it's just quite. I, I'm just kind of, I'm taking my emotions out of it now, and I'm just sort of saying whatever happens, happens, because I trust Danny Rowe in either scenario. Yeah, that so, way. I'm, I'm pretty much in the same. I, if, I need to cut my emotions off, because otherwise I can't cope with it all. <laughs> but, if um, we do it, mm. then he's done a miracle job. Exactly, and exactly. You've then got to back him and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't, you back him in the thing and you go, you put on a damn good try. Just a shame mm. it was just a little bit too late and you just didn't have the last exactly. pieces that you needed. Exactly. I mean, that's and like it, even, uh, well, there's a whole other thing to sort of go into great deal about that it's not Danny Rule's fault at all. And it is certain a certain somebody's for not doing the right things and not listening to the right people and not eating a bit of humble pie at certain times and that's just a whole other argument yeah uh, and a whole other video and one that you will probably be making in the summer i would imagine if certain things happen um i might bet him to be busy I, I might even do it on my wednesday channel but um yeah it's just mm, it, it's getting to a very i think there's a lot of people clenching everything that they've got at the moment and just white knuckling it as they yeah. say to the to the end of the season like i am definitely i can, I can see just... i can see season ticket being down by a lot next season oh god yeah uh, oh god yeah i mean are adding off um at the situation. Not, ju not just because of the bloody mortgages they'll have to take out to be able to afford the damn thing yeah. but like we'll in see terms what happens. of the league and everything it's oh, we'll see yeah. what happens mm. there's a lot of people who don't want to leave one tour again but it, you're gonna get it <laughs> if they, exactly if they going but have you got anything else to finish it with jack before we end this episode i just sort of think that we need to be kind a lot i've seen a lot of toxicity coming out again because of what's going on with the league position and everything and i think we need to be a lot kinder to each other and remember that we're all fans of the same club we are all actually fans of Sheffield Wednesday and therefore we need to stick together and not keep turning on each other and not get angry at each other and slinging abuse here, there and everywhere at each other. And we need to respect each other as individuals and respect that we may not have the same opinions and we may not have the same takes and this, that and the other and stop just slandering other people because on with baseless arguments because of the fact that they've got a different opinion to yourself. And not also, we need to stop this weird tweeting of baseless, like, takes and points just because we think we'll look cool and get a lot of likes on a post or because we think we're really cool because we made one song for a fan base <laughs> that's gone a bit viral and like, ooh, look at me. Like, no, give over. Be kind to each other. we we'll stick together because clearly certain people at the club all the way at the very top are not having that same mindset that we should have. So... There we are. That's that's my... And I think I'll just end little... it on with we're all Wednesday, aren't we? See you in the next exactly. one. Exactly. Yes. See you later. <laughs>